Hey, hey, my good people. How are you all doing? You know what time it is. It's your girls, Alicia, your millennial empowerment catalyst, where we get to encourage, inspire, and uplift young women around the world. We use this platform to help young women know that they are not alone, that our stories can be their survival kit, sis, get up, or a guide. Well, today we have the amazing Miss Sandra Standstill. And let me tell you a little about Miss Sandra. She's an, an accomplished entrepreneur, best selling author, and international speaker who has started six successful businesses all on a skinny budget. Mm. Go, Miss Sandra. <laughs> With a diversified background, which include trade show development, medical compliances, marketing, and sales, Sandra has coached thousands and many others in, in that area, in different areas. She is consistently rated high as having the patient and know-how getting you on track to start that business idea without worrying about finding the money, figuring out the license needed, having the right supplies or equipment and more. Sandra wants to work with you. Who do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Sandra, it's a pleasure to have you here. How are you doing today? I am, I have to tell you, I, I am really excited to be here today. I'm doing fine. All kinds of things, you know, happen to try to stop success from happening, but it's not happening. I'm here. And so I'm excited. I'm excited to be here. That is awesome. So we are dealing with regaining yourself after a narcissism, nar narcissus. Oh, that word is going to have my tongue tied tonight. <laughs> so you know what? I'm going to use the abbreviate word, narcissus. <laughs> So share with us with being in a relationship in a relationship with a narcissist. And well, explain to us what is a narcissist. Okay, so let me tell you about a narcissist. But before we do that, let me just I just want to preface just to let you know, a lot of people, including me, have had the had the problems, or I won't say problems, but just had a little difficulty in pronouncing narcissist or narcissism. I have practiced it over and over again after I discovered that, you know, the word or the name and uh, it took a while, but yeah. So for you or anybody else that, you know, had think they have a problem with it. No, it's, it's not a problem. It's, it's a difficult word to pronounce. So once you get used to it, yes. <laughs> so uh, to answer your question, um, gosh, I went into the explanation and forgot your question. How, well, I think you asked me, what is a narcissist or what is a, what is narcissism? Yes. Okay. Share your, share your journey with being a, in a relationship with a narcissist. Absolutely. Okay. So narcissism, I actually des describe narcissism and what I discovered. This, I, this is how I describe it. And what I, it, is, it is what I discovered is it is a personality disorder. It's a personality disorder. A person who possesses um, this personality disorder has, um, they have a grandiose appearance or opinion about themselves. They think it's, a, it's beyond selfishness. Mm -hmm. They think the world evolves around them or they, they believe and, and they need for the world to evolve around them. Mm -hmm. And um, they just want everyone to um, to to adore them, to have great uh, admiration for them. Everything that they do and all that they do is all calculated in making them feel good and make them feel great. So let me tell you, I'll tell you about my story and and how I discovered that I was um, involved with a narcissist. I was actually in, and just to start it off, I was in a 26 year relationship. And of that 26 years, 18 of those years, I was married. It was a legal <laughs> relationship. I was married to a narcissist. And I would say probably, oh, let me think. Probably six years, I will have to go back and look, but I think six years 
um, before um, I came out of it, I realized that I was, you know, that, that this person was uh, a narcissist. And so what happened was I was doing all things trying to keep the marriage. I was a person who never wanted to experience divorce. I had experienced that in my family. And, and so I just went, I did everything that I, I knew I needed to do. Everything that God said that a, a woman, a godly wife should do, um, you know, to uh, keep the marriage happy going. And for some reason, it was never, never enough. I told you I, I was built up and um yeah, I was built up and and just made to feel like I was this this the most wonderful and beautiful person on earth. Um, but then it turned around and the attention and the love that I thought I was getting love was was receiving was not happening. Um it was actual neglect. And um and it, it was a friend of mine who was a friend of mine at the time, you know, gave me a description of self-absorbed is what she described. She described herself as self-absorbed. And I decided, let me look this up. And she told me, you know what the problem is with your husband at, at that time? Um, she said, and um, she said, he too is self-absorbed. I decided, Alicia, I decided to look up this word self-absorbed. And I kept seeing this where, I, I mean, I just spent so much, I spent hours and hours. I started at 1030 at night and I went actually through the entire night. Discovered what self-absorbed was. And I kept seeing the word narcissism mm -hmm. or narcissist. I had no idea what it was. Oh, I would see NPD, which stands for Narcissistic Personality Disorder. And I decided, let me take a break. It probably was like one o'clock in the morning. Let me put in this word narcissism and, and see what it meant. And oh my gosh, I took a self-assessment test. Wow. Took, a self, took the self-assessment test and you know how you take a test and you take the test and usually about, you know, four, maybe six of them are, are you know, are right and the rest of them are wrong. Yeah. Oh my gosh, all of them were right except for like four of them. Wow. And, and, and so when I had tested, I uh, tested him and everything that was, it was clear. I was married to a narcissist. <laughs> oh my gosh. And so then I went to study a little bit further and find out well, what do I do? I mean, I, I, I didn't want to experience divorce. I didn't want to get a divorce. Um, by the way, I am divorced and happily married by now. <laughs> it's just not, you know, but I and so what I wanted, I, I just really wanted to find out how can I, you know, how can I probably save this? It was anything that I can do, anything I did wrong. And um it really I in my study I learned there was nothing that I could do. And what they recommended was the best thing to do was to get out of this. Um, relationship or marriage and get out as quickly as possible. So I did start the process eventually. Um, I did what they say most people who are in um, narcissism, narcissistic relationships or marriages do. I did everything trying to, to you know, to save it. Um, and, you know, people go through a grieving period. I think there's about six or seven of them phases that they go through for grieving. Well, they say you go through that for this additional six or seven more that you have to go through when you are experiencing, you know, you're separating yourself or getting it, releasing, relieving, relieving yourself from a narcissist. So how I reclaim myself, I started doing, eventually started listening to what I was studying, applying those things to my life, and um, and slowly but surely get myself out of this relationship. So I did eventually separate and I gave it a year because I, I really just did not want to believe that this person was a narcissist. Um, gave it a year, there was no change, no improvement. And then I started the process of, of filing for divorce. But that self-study, Felicia, I'm telling you, it it helped me so much. Yeah, it helped me so much. So that's how that's what I did, <laughs> and that's pretty much that's part of my story. So let me just add this to it as well. While I was studying, 
And while I was separated, I discovered that it was not the first time I had experienced narcissism, but I did not know it. Mm. So there were other people had been in my life and there have been other people since that have come into my life that, that have this personality disorder. So one of the things that I discovered is that people who have been involved with a narcissist attract them. So I had to accept that I'm a person who attracts this type of person. Mm-hmm. And I have to make myself aware. Um, I don't walk around every day thinking, oh, is this person a narcissist? Is that person a narcissist? But I have to say my antennas will go up and I will think. And, you know, after I start to, to experience um, this person, you know, this pull, because they, they kind of zap your energy, not kind of, but they do zap your energy. And when I start to experience that, or a person may may make statements or say something like, um, this is one of the things that uh, he always said was that I um, was harming him or I was trying to cause him harm or I was attacking him. I could ask him a question and he would say I was attacking him. And those would, they were just common words. And then I, I noticed that other people would say the same thing over something simple, a, a simple question that you would ask or, or not really a challenge, but, you know, just, just trying to understand, trying to relate. And so um, <laughs> with, with all of that, that, that was a process, but I did discover that other people, I had relatives, I had some people who are friends who are no longer friends, because as soon as I learned that a person is a narcissist, I released them immediately. Uh, every once in a while, it's a process if I've gotten too close with them, um, but I do eventually release them. So always I'm reclaiming, reclaiming myself from a narcissist. <laughs> Sandra, I you know while you were telling your story, you were just answering some of my questions. And I'm gonna still bring them to light. <laughs> yes. Go ahead anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so one of my questions um to you would be how can you tell if someone is a narcissist a narcissist? <laughs> Okay, yes, you're right. I did ask, kind of answer that question, but that's true. And, you know, for the benefit of those who are um, listening as well, yeah, I, I think, yeah, let me let me answer that question. So I did mention it is our energy pull. So you start to feel feel like the, the energy in you has been drained, has been pulled away. And um, they, they tend to... Um, you know, they, they look like everyday people. Mm-hmm. They're in high places. They have high positions, um, either in society or in their job in organizations. Um, and they tend to, um, you actually don't recognize it right away unless you, you know, you're just constantly, you know, paying attention, but they tend to, um, you know, compliment you, give you a lot of energy, I mean, give you a lot of compliments and a lot of, you um, 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 building up, they give you what they actually need, and then suddenly they start to tear you down. Um, and I know some people who have been in boss situations where, and and it's not only in an employer-employee situation, but it's, it often happens in a in a person you know personal relationship as well. They will start to build you up, and then the they'll start to take your words, take them out of context. Um, they try to make you seem like you um, have no idea what you're talking about. They'll play tricks, they play mind games on you, or they try to play tricks on what you're saying. And so they oftentimes are appalled by, like I was mentioning, a simple uh, question that you might ask them. They feel like they've been confronted. Like you're attacking them. Yes, like you're attacking them, exactly. Exactly. So I hope that answered your question about how I can tell or how you can tell when somebody is narcissistic. And, you know, one of the ways that I do that also and I recommend is if you don't know, um, if, if that person is, say, your neighbor, look up the word, just do a search on the word narcissistic neighbor 
and see if they have those, you know, characteristics. Mm. And so I was just trying to think of another type of, it's, it's a, a relationship, but, um, and in most cases there are, there are more men than there are um, who are narcissists than there are women, mm. but it is, it is both. Oh, wow, that, that, that brings up, that, that really brought light to my attention. <laughs> I love it. So, what do you think cause narcissism, narcissism? <laughs> so what causes, and that's a good, that's a very good question too. So, you know, this, what I have studied is that um, it is, what causes it is, is an acquired personality disorder. You're not born with it. Um, so it is, is either a person who has had extreme harm. They've been harmed and it's been really extreme. And as a way of protecting themselves, they have to, you know, um, give themselves the impression that they are the greatest, even though deep down inside their value for themselves is is diminished. It's like below low. Um, some people have said it's a person who is spoiled as a child. They got everything that they wanted. And when they, they come up as an adult, they believe that everybody is, is supposed to um, provide for them, give to them, look up to them and, you know, and, and do the same. Um, there are people who have um, uh, they, no boundaries. And you know they've not, they've been or they might have been raised by one. They might have been raised by a narcissist. And usually, people either, either you, if you're raised by a person who has narcissistic personality disorder, they what I've learned is that they are either uh, become a narcissist themselves or they become codependent mm. and them as well. Wow. <laughs> Thank you, friends. We who is sharing with us on reclaiming herself after being in a relationship with a narcissism. And if you have any question, please do share in the chat with us. I'm sure Miss Sandra would love to answer your question. <laughs> and um, I sure will. <laughs> <laughs> my next question would be: How do you how do you deal? Like if you're in that relationship, how do you mm -hmm. deal with that person? Like, is there like, you try to walk on eggshell just not to um, offend or make this person mad or, yeah, how do you deal with just being in that relationship? You wanna know a quick answer? I got a couple answers I can give you. Get away from them as quickly as possible. As soon as possible, immediately. That's how I deal with a narcissist. And that's how I recommend everyone else, you know, who discovers that they are involved with a narcissist. As quickly as possible. If you can, if you cannot, as some people who are married or they have children with the narcissist, it's a little bit difficult because you you have, you know, you have the children involved as well. But you somehow have to get away from them as possible. Um it's, you know, it's, you can start the process to eliminate them or, you know, from your life or what you need to do is you need to diminish the contact, the amount of contact. That means no phone calls, no visits, no, um, no visits to your home, no visits at the park, uh, no meetup locations, uh, diminish all contacts, text messages, social media, all of it, because the attention that you give them just the slightest response in a text message or an email builds them up. Mm. Basically, using you, uh, they they call it, and sometimes like you're the drug. The person who's giving them um, the attention is the drug, and what they seek from you, they call narcissistic supply. So you're like the supply of their their drug and so yeah <laughs> and so so what you need to do is you not need to stop being that narcissistic supply to them and so the best way to do it is to eliminate all contact with them um like i said emails text messages any form any kind of new um medium social media that comes out you need to stop all contact 
and you have to remove yourself from their space. So to answer your question about how to, how you deal with it, and that's how I deal with a narcissist and that's how I had suggested many of my clients and others as well. So Sandra, I know the journey was not easy for you. Um, for someone who is in this relationship and is struggling to let go, what advice can you give to them? I know, cause you know, you're saying, I know you're saying to cut out all mm -hmm. contact or what have you, but for someone it's not easy because you know, they still have that love, you know, yeah. for that person. So what advice can you give to that person? So advice, I would say the first thing I wanna do and I would suggest you do is, um, I'm gonna suggest that you do what I did. I only know one way and that is uh, a self-study. Mm -hmm. And what I did is I did a search and actually, you know, I have it here. If I can share it with you, I have it here. I had a booklet that um, I shared it with so many people after I learned about it. And my self-study, I. I did not know you can get to the end of the internet. <laughs> I was able at that time, that was years ago. Um, that was like in 2000, oh gosh, probably 2004. I got, um, in my search, I got to the end of finding out about the about narcissism. And this is the booklet. I created it, it's called Narcissism. A friend of mine actually printed up and bound it for me. But this was my self-study of everything I did on narcissism. I read this book and I kept it, you know, and I, you know, I went through it. So I would suggest that someone, what you want to do is do a self-study, do a, a self-test. I actually have a self-test and for your audience, if I can give it to them free, I would love to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. um, but um, it's a self-study test. And it's the same test that I took on finding out, is that person a narcissist? And the name of it is, is your spouse or yeah, is your spouse a um, or your partner a narcissist? I think that's the name of the test. And I didn't create it if someone else had created it, but I used it. But I would suggest that you do a self-study or you, or, or you do a, a self-assessment test. And when you find out that that person is a narcissist, realize also what they say that they've been harmed, that you have actually been harmed, and it is not your fault. That's the important thing for people, for for your audience and so many people to know. It is not your fault. They found you. They attracted you. And they discovered, because sometimes this doesn't work with other people, you know, the little games that they play. It doesn't work with people. But if you're a person who is caring or codependent, you can actually be broken yourself. Honestly, I was broken. That's mm -hmm. how this person and this person recognized. They tried it. They'll try it with everyone. But some people it works and some people it does not. It happened to work with me. <laughs> and so that's what I suggest they do. And in and, and this booklet that I have is the, here it is. I can, I can share it. I can just hold it up a little bit so everybody can see. It's called, it's, 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 yeah, is your partner a narcissist? And it was by Dr. Nina Brown. Um, and I've reached out to her so many times trying, uh, trying to find her because I want to give her credit because it, it was a blessing for me. And it's actually, um, it's actually 30 questions. And it helps you to identify if they have narcissistic traits or not. Mm, wow. So you see that you did your homework. We were playing with this. <laughs> So, you know what, Delisha, that was not, you know, this, this was pulled together, you know, nicely for me, mm. but actually it, it didn't, it didn't start with just, it didn't stop with my studying about narcissism by using the internet. I have a whole bag full of references and resources. If you don't mind, I'll share, I'll show it to you. I'll, let me, I can pull it out. Is it okay that I pull it out and share? Because I've done this before on a couple occasions. I don't know if you have seen it before, but I do have it here. And it is, it's very heavy, so you can see me. This oh, wow. is all of my study. Wow. And I started to put it in the binder. If you can see, oh, the binder's right here. Yeah, all of my study on narcissism is very heavy. And 
but I needed to know how to get myself out of it. Yeah. And so, yes, that's, that's what I recommend is um, to do a self-study um, or start to research. Yeah. If, it, if it is a parent, do, nar- do a search on narcissistic parent. If it is a boyfriend or a girlfriend, do a study, uh, do a search on narcissistic boyfriend or narcissistic girlfriend, whatever their, their connection with you. If it's a board yeah. member, the <laughs> same thing. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I know you said that there are different tests on narcissists, um, different parents, um, if there's a boss or a boyfriend yeah. or what have you. But for parents, how do you deal with that? Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I wasn't trying to go there. <laughs> Um, so do you but, like, like, okay, I understand mommy or daddy is like this. So, you know, I'm aware. So I would take, you know, the necessary step to not get them into that place. Yeah. Mm. So, so, so be truthfully honest. I did have a parent that was a narcissist. I did not know until I started get healing myself, you know, doing my self-study and trying to get healing from this experience. And then, oh my gosh, lo and behold, I discovered all these different people in my life, in my past, and it was current, was a narcissist. So my mother was a narcissist, Mm. but I did not know that she was a narcissist at that time. But when I went back and I did the study and I did this self-assessment test as well on a narcissistic mother and like, oh my gosh, Yes, she was a narcissist, and that's what happened. Um, you know, I, I I can't say it was her fault. Um, from my understanding of upbring- her upbringing, is that it was it was very traumatic, mm-hmm. and it really fit the picture. So, a person who has a parent that's a narcissist, that's a kind of relationship that I mentioned earlier. You want to um, the best thing that you can do is keep your distance as possible. That's a relationship that you cannot help but have. But some people have had to forsake their parents mm-hmm. or they had to forsake, you know, they had to let them go and have no contact. Um, there have been many times where in when my mother, because my mother is no longer here with us, but there are many times when she, um, I, I had to forsake her. And then I would come back in her life and we would connect again, um, and it would be that narcissistic, you know, abuse occurring again. And then, for my own sake, for my own self value, I had to separate and sever the tie. Mm-hmm. And so, um, that's that's the best thing. I I don't know any else, anything else other than speaking to um, a professional who is experienced with helping others uh, relieve themselves um, from a person who um, has, you know, the, who, who they're involved with, with narcissism or they experience narcissistic abuse. And a, pro- 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 excuse me, a professional I'm referring to is um, like a, 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 a psychologist or a psychiatrist, even a psychiatric social worker or a psychiatric, psychiatric nurse, mm-hmm. uh, someone who, a, a mental health professional, you know, and I have to say, just a side note, even in my self-study, I had learned that th- they are so cunning, they can fool a professional. Mm-hmm. So when I was in that marriage, we actually did go see a, um, a psychiatrist, it was a marriage psychiatrist, and she was fooled. Mm-hmm. She actually did not identify that he was a narcissist. And uh, and then talking with another professional, um, I, I had learned that they often do, they often do full, uh, many of the professionals are not able to diagnose them. So um, I'm not a, you know, I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist or anything like that. I'm a person who has an experienced mm-hmm. narcissistic abuse over and over and over again. And so, um, but 
you know, someone who, you know, dealing with a parent, the best thing that you could do that I, what I would recommend, you know, is first test them, test to make sure, and then keep your distance as much as possible mm. for your for your own self, for your own sanity, your mm. own self. But again, there are times that you're going to, you're going to have to deal with them. You know, because it may not just be a parent. It could be, you know, a sister or a brother. It can be a cousin. It can be an aunt or an uncle. You know, it can be anyone that you have to have a tie. Mm -hmm. That's so true. That's so true. And my last question about what it says, can a narcissist heal? Can they heal, be healed? So the answer to that is, if they choose to. Mm. A narcissist can be healed if they choose to, again, from my study. Um, but in my, my study also, and I, I, I didn't mean to use the word, but I would say, and in my study, uh, what I've learned is in order for them to heal, they have to first admit that they have a problem. Admitting that they have a problem from what, I, what I've learned is it's not possible for them because it means that it, it practically means it would mean committing suicide. Mm. So they they realize oftentimes they do know that they have this problem. They do know that it exists. Um, but being able to uh, if um, they can and and I know I I now have heard of many people that have sought out to get help you know, from, um, from being that way. Um, but it's, it's a very long process of, of uh, intense therapy, but it is possible that, you know, that they can, um, they can start to process. I have not met ever a person who's a narcissist that has healed from that personality disorder, but it is. But it is possible. It is, it, all things, all things are possible. <laughs> I believe that all things are possible. However, I'm not going to stand around and wait for that to happen because doing that will tear me down. And then I have a purpose, you know, in life here. And honestly, I just, I, I choose as, as I, as you see this here, I choose to be happy choose because I was unhappy for so long and for too long. Wow. So I have a question on the floor. The um, yes. Francine, she mm -hmm. asks, did you tell your husband that he was a narcissist? Oh, that's a very, very good question, Francine. The answer is, well, let me preface it by saying what I study in my rec and in recommendations, they say, do not tell the person that they are a narcissist or they have a part narcissism or they are, have narcissistic personality disorder because it's not going to do any good. It's going to make it worse for yourself. Um, and, uh, and they won't accept it. And the answer to that question is eventually, yes, I did. When it came to the very end and I was at my last draw, I did tell uh, the ex, I refer to him as the ex and I don't refer to him as mine anymore. A lot of people say my ex, <laughs> but <laughs> um, so, but I did tell him that he was a narcissist and, and his reaction was blank as if I said nothing. Mm. So I was left unvalidated and, um, I was left frustrated because it was my last hope. And because it was my last hope and the look of his face on his face at that time, there was no hope. I, and, and I had to go back and accept that um, everything that I had done and all that I tried to do, it was nothing else. There was nothing I can do that I was wrong again, trying to save him, trying to you know hold on, trying to improve. Mm -hmm. The best thing I can do was what was recommended was free myself from this narcissistic abuse. And at that time, I didn't know that it was abuse. I didn't know it was called that, but I did eventually do that. Thank you, Francine, for asking that question. 
yeah. That's a good question. So, on your journey of narcissism. <laughs> narcissism. <laughs> if everybody at home, you want to try to practice this, say narcissism. Narcissism. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So thank you for enlightening us on your journey. We appreciate the tips, the tools, and the resources that you have left with us today. Any more nuggets that you would like to leave with our guests, with our audience, and where can someone find you if they want to reach out to you? Okay, great. You know, so yes, the, the last nugget I think is the most important nugget is that you can relieve yourself from narcissistic abuse. You can live again. You can smile again. I'm smiling often and all the time. You can, that's the important thing. And the best thing too is to, if you, once you, once you discover that you're in a person, you, you know, in a relationship with a person like this or a person who has, um, um, you know, self-absorbed or narcissism, get yourself away from them as quickly as possible. That's the best thing that I can that I would I would suggest. And then you can find me on social media everywhere. I'm on um, uh, on Facebook as Sandra E. Stansel. Uh, you can do a search there. You can also find me on uh, Instagram as well. Uh, you can also find me on Clubhouse, Sandra E. Stansel. I'm right there at Sandra E. Stansel. And um, and also I do want to, and I did say that I want to share that self-assessment test. So I will um, grab the link and I'll put it in the chat after the broadcast, if that's okay. Yes, that's more than okay. I'm okay. sure we're all waiting to get that test to just go and see, find out if our neighbors are, are we dating someone that is a narcissism? Narcissist, <laughs> yes. <laughs> So yeah, I'm sure everyone is waiting to because I got clarity. I mean, and yeah, you just open up my mind to a whole new world. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Awesome. So once again, thank you all for joining us, Miss Tanya E. Hood, Francine Jackson, Elgan and Ramming, Natasha, Riley, Apple, White, Danny Ferrero. Thank wow. you once indeed everyone i know i cannot see everyone who's really watching the live because Streamyard won't allow me to see it but thank you again for watching those who would watch the replay thank you again and also if you have not followed the page i'm asking you to please follow our page delisha murray your millennial empowerment caddis on linkedin twitter instagram where else yeah face everywhere <laughs> And also, if you need help on your journey, just reach out to me or Miss Sandra. We are here to help you. And also, remember that your voice matter, your story matter, and you are not alone. You have the power to get up and rise up. Have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, or night. Thank you so much, and we'll see you again on another episode of Leveling Up Your Confidence. Do have a good one. Bye.